Hello! Welcome to the video where I show you pretty much everything I've done with the Iron Man suit. I would say it's done. I have a couple of things I want to add here and there, like maybe mobility-wise or cool factor-wise, right? Maybe I wanted to shoot something, I don't know. But for the most part, it's done, it's wearable, and I wanted to show it off. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on because I know if I don't, everyone's just going to skip to the part where I put it on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. It's in this box. Yeah! It all fits in a single box. That one does too, so, you know, pretty nice. Uh, this is the helmet. It's wrapped in a Minecraft blanket, but you know, it does its job. We gonna set this fella right here, and I guess I'm gonna put it on for you guys. This is... it's a fun process. Now, disclaimer, um, last time I used this and was wearing it, I filmed a TikTok where I tackled my brother. Probably wasn't the best thing to do in it. A buckle came off of the chest, which is very expected. But the important part about it is nothing broke. And by nothing, I mean like none of the serious parts, right? But maybe the tackling was worth it. We got a little bit of battle damage here and there. It just makes it more authentic. All right, so it's on. I'm able to actually put it on all by myself, which is a huge improvement from that guy, right? You, you suck, okay? You really do. So again, it's a little clunky. You can kind of hear the plastic hitting each other. I still have some things to pad, but just kind of wanted to be able to show you guys what it did. So first of all, we've got the back flaps to open. I've stuck the button. It's in my glove right here. So whenever I press that, these guys open up. Here's a closer look at the back. There's some LEDs under there too that light up whenever they come up. And again, I literally just have a button in my thumb and I'm able to press that. Second of all, I've got the arm missile. Um, this guy is just activated with a pressure switch underneath my wrist. So every time I pull my wrist down, it opens up like that. Finally, the most popular part is the helmet. It opens with a button in the chin. So that way I'm able to use the helmet separately from the suit and it's not wired into any other parts too. In this guy, all the wires from the helmet went down to the chest, which means they had to run down the neck piece, which was the most uncomfortable experience of my life. But yes, this is the suit. Um, I've still got some little bits I wanna fill in with like some foam or something or TPU. Um, you can see these little open gaps. I will say it is pretty mobile. Uh, sitting down is a little harder. I have to have help with that. Um, stairs, a lot easier in this guy. Has it feel to be replaced? So yes, this is the suit. This is it. Um, I do plan on wearing it out in public. I think that would be really fun. But I did want to give you guys some more insight as to how things work. Um, a little bit more of the details as to how I made it and all the different parts. So if you're interested in that, here you go. Okay, so in explaining a lot of how this works, I figured we work from bottom to top. First of all, these are the boots. I printed these in like 30% infill. They're very heavy. Um, I put like foam padding along the inside and some on the bottom. So I actually just wear my socks, slip my feet right into the shoe. Um, it's hinged in the middle so I can kind of walk a little bit. And I did buy some rubber padding I want to put along the bottom just so I don't slide around if I'm walking on a hard surface. Another point of interest that people have been asking about are the knees. This is the thigh, this is the shin. They're both in two separate pieces. And I had to have them in two separate pieces because unfortunately the way that the thigh is made, I literally am unable to stick my foot through this way because this kneecap kind of gets in the way. So I have to awkwardly turn it this way. And then once my foot's through, turn it the other way. So it was impossible to leave the two like completely attached. I don't know if it'll focus, but this is a hinge from a knee brace. I just ordered off of Amazon because one of my goals was to have the kneecap centered whenever you bend your knee because on that guy, right? I had to attach the kneecap to the shin so that every time you bent your knee, there was like this huge gap there and I didn't like that. So in order to keep the kneecap in the middle, this is the kneecap, I designed this brace for it that fit around the hinges and I put magnets on either side of them, right there and there. If you can see, I epoxied those in. And that way after I put the leg on, I can clip this in, it stays like that. And then whenever I bend it, it goes along with the kneecap and I push it back up. It goes back with it. And then as far as how it connects to the shin, on the inside of the shin, so I plastic welded two little clips there and each of the hinges slide through both of these slots. So when I put the shin on, I just line up the hinges um, with each of the slots. It's hard to do with one hand. 
and it goes in like that. But obviously if I were to like stomp on the ground, sometimes um, this can slide further into the shin than it's supposed to go and that can pop the kneecap off. So I would like to go back and redesign that at some point. And then additionally, for anyone wondering, you can see all the wear and tear uh, that's been on the bottom of these shins after I've worn them for so much. Um, but this portion is made out of TPU, which is a flexible filament. Uh, so that way I'm able to like bend my foot a lot better. These are in multiple parts, so that already helps, but like these pieces actually bend really well. And to paint those, you have to use acrylic paint because if you use any other type of automotive paint, it's just gonna crack. Also, can we just appreciate how well I was able to color match this, okay? This and this, they weren't from the same spray can or anything. Like I literally had to match this color with acrylic paints to this, okay? Just saying, moving on up. I've got them like all sprawled out on the floor right now. The ab pieces. All of this, this portion right here is made out of PLA. So this is tough, like rigid filament. Um, but I did have breaks in it because obviously one of the big goals with this was mobility. So I put a cut here, a cut here, um, but then I just backed it with foam so that, you know, they're rigid pieces, but I can still move back and forth. You can see that piece of foam there but everything is still pretty flexible. These pods are printed out of PLA and just kind of attached with a flap of foam. But then this guy up here, this is TPU. How flexible the ab piece has been has definitely been like the biggest help in mobility for sure. Just being able to move side to side without like being constricted. That guy back there is just like a plate on my stomach of rigid material. You can't bend this way, this way, that way. It's terrible, but very happy with this. Again, can we appreciate the color match? Yes. Oh yes. The other portion of the abs, which is pretty important, um, are these. So the way it connects is it connects up to the chest piece right here, um, the sides of that back of the ab piece right here, and the bottom of it. All with buckles, pretty easy. Um, and then we've got springs going down the back of this ab plate. The Do 3D files that I used came with them like flat as a slab, right? Like that guy but I decided to go in and slice these into individual ab pieces. And then I don't think you're gonna be able to see, but I did 3D print individual hooks for the spring to like spin into, and I placed them along each plate at the top and the bottom. And it holds it together very well. If I bend forward, it obviously does this number here. But again, this was probably one of the biggest contributors uh, to being able to move a lot. Next part, you guys have seen the chest. Um, anyway, this is the back of it. It's just got a crap ton of buckles. Uh, these up here are to connect the back brace. These are on the sides, and then these are to connect the ab plate that I just showed you. You can see my wonderful, ugly soldering job and just the tiny little battery pack right there. Flip the switch, arc reactor turns on. I've got this whole thing padded as well, just cause you don't want to have any like rubbing. Obviously the abs would be super scratched up. Um, if they were to collapse into the chest and not have this padding. Again, something that I did with the back and the chest only is I fiberglassed them. Another reason why I think it did not implode on itself when I tackled my brother the other day. My fiberglassing isn't perfect, but I'm getting better. This is about two layers of cloth and resin and then a final like really thick layer of resin on top. I found that's helped a ton with just making the job look a lot smoother. But yes, that's the chest. One of my favorite parts here, probably because I think I modeled this myself, so I'm gonna be pretty hyped about it. This is the back brace I designed. I designed it to like fit me pretty snugly, and thankfully it does that. This is the outer back, which is what everyone else sees, right? But I designed this so it has flaps with magnets, place magnets on the inside of this guy as well. And I can actually hook it over on top of these magnets, like that. And it clips down into place pretty well too. Like if I turn it upside down, I'm gonna be careful here, but I am pretty proud of this. It stays pretty well. Like I'm not holding on to it or anything. I'm just holding on to the brace. So the idea is that the outer shell just has these flaps that move up and down freely, no motors on it, nothing. But underneath is where you have the motors attached to the back flaps and just some like underneath parts to make it look cool. So these are two servo motors that open the flaps up and down. Basically, I just designed and 3D printed these real quick, um, took the servo arm, just, welded it in there and then just had like a little push arm just to be able to push the flaps up and down and that's literally all you do you take them you attach them to the servo you attach them in the down position as well so i'm gonna hit a button that's routed down to my glove and these guys pop open 
I don't know if you can see it with the light, but I also put some colored LEDs in there too, just to kind of simulate rockets. The eventual goal is to actually have compressed air come out of this hole. And that's what this little round portion is for. It was to hold a can of something. Obviously we haven't gotten there yet. Would have to modify it pretty heavily, but that still might be the plan. I have for the most part wired everything separately, like the helmet, the arm, the back, everything's separate with a different arduino nano to me it makes it simpler and oh the arm's not working well it must be the electronics in the arm right whereas if i were to wire it all together and plug it all up and something doesn't work all of a sudden something else might not work i don't know and then troubleshooting becomes a lot more difficult but that's just my train of thought maybe it's lazy i don't know looking more at the front these are the magnets and this is just where the shoulders sit with buckles so to show you how i kind of use this right I'm going to take the shell, place it over the magnets until it kind of clicks like that. And then I press the button and both of them pop up. Shoulders are boring. They just kind of clip there and stay there. Arm is not so boring. I use Chicago screws for the hinges and the arms and everything. Um, those have worked great. I've gotten like a huge pack of those off of Amazon for like $10. So we've got the batteries turned on right here. And if you can see this right here, if it'll focus for the 50th time, this right here is a pressure switch. And every time I click it, which ends up being clicked whenever I pull my wrist down, right? This guy pops up. This guy right here is just a little 3D printed case I made for four red LEDs. The wires do be looking kind of nasty. I did design though the little mechanism that pops it up. Wasn't too difficult. It's literally just two guys that go um, But the servo's right there. Um, just pulls it up with one single arm and then two in the back just kind of prop the rest of it up. Pretty simple. Watcha. Pew pew. I'll admit to after I built this I did not stop wearing this for like three days just walking around the apartment like an idiot flicking my arm everywhere. Here's the other arm. It's boring. I haven't motorized it yet. Both of them do have a little buckle though to hold the little palm plate. And by those, I mean this. These sit over the top of the hands. They're just movie accurate, I guess. As if I was going for movie accurate with this, right? It's not even red. This guy buckles into here like so. So it sits like that. It can move around, has a hinge. And then the glove has a little piece of Velcro on the back that sticks to this. As far as the gloves go, they're nothing fancy. Um, PLA. It's a clear PLA piece that I just kind of printed real quick and stuck in there. The paint is peeling up a little bit now after I've used them for so long. But for anyone wondering what I did in between the fingers, and I got this from my pal Kiera. I'll link her in the comments. I actually took a rubber gardening glove, um, took some puffy paint, put the little lines for the in-between parts in between the fingers, and then spray painted it blue. It is peeling up a good bit now just because I've like put it through a lot. But definitely my favorite glove I've made so far. I can do so much more with this one than the ones for that guy. I love how I just keep pointing at it as like the bad example of everything. Like you suck, everything about you sucks. Coming up on the last two parts here, this is the neck. Again, color matched this with acrylic paints, all TPU. It was printed in two parts, plastic welded uh, the back to the side right here. And then I have magnets inside this piece of foam and magnets on the back of this. And it just kind of clips in place. I did go through um, and divide the file up so that each piece of the neck was separate just so I could move around a little bit better. I do hate that sometimes the gap like shows through whenever I'm wearing it, but the mobility is worth it. And finally, bam, I can't remember if I showed this before. This is my baby. I almost took wedding pictures with this thing and then I didn't. Do you wanna say the file for this guy was made by my friend Conrad. I'll be linking him in the description as well. So this guy has light up eyes. The eyes, if you look closely, don't know if you're gonna be able to see, um, but there are dots on an acrylic plate. So that kind of allows the light to hit the dots from the side and then reflect out, but it also means you can still see. You can take these acrylic plates, heat them up, warp them to fit the helmet or whatever you're making, and they're pretty neat. Obviously, if you're in like a super dark room, it's gonna be pretty hard to see. But if you're like outside or something, it's perfect. Another goal of mine was to have everything combined into one helmet because this guy, again, shame on you. All the wires that control the helmet and allow it to open and close are in the chest, which means I can't wear the helmet and open and close it unless I'm wearing the entire suit. So I put the button to open and close it in the chin. You can see that guy right there, there's a pressure switch and I put some foam on top of it too because it started to scratch my chin. But I just kind of move my jaw and it closes. This part is separate and then kind of just clips in with magnets. But to me, the coolest part of this helmet for sure is the fact that 
the chin also moves. So this is what the inside looks like. Um, I kind of had to finagle around with it. I know when my buddy Conrad designed it, he kind of designed it to his own head, to the servo sizes that he had. So I kind of had to make it work for me. So this is the inside. Um, if you're wondering, I did put foam here. Some partially take this foam off, but I've got um, Velcro on each of the servos just to hold this in place. But I pretty much got the Arduino Nano just kind of glued in between the servos with all the wires running to it. Tried to do a little better with uh, cable management. And then this is the battery box right there. It's literally just tape because I'm, I'm paranoid. It does clip in and out, but it falling out is my worst nightmare because obviously it would pull the rest of the wires out too. That's not good. But that's the battery box. I can kind of turn it on and turn it off, but it is all contained and very fun to wear. So a couple more things about the suit. This is me just kind of responding to the most frequently asked questions I've gotten. Number one, how comfortable is it? Compared to the last guy, again, you suck. I'd honestly say it's pretty comfortable. The other one weighed about 20 pounds. This one I do think still weighs 20 pounds, but the weight is distributed much better. The last one had the weight of the legs, abs, and chest and back all of my shoulders. This one literally just has the weight of the back and the chest on my shoulders. The weight of the legs is on the legs, weight of the abs is on the abs. It fits a lot better. Question two, where'd you get the files from? What did you use? How'd you do it? As far as files for 3D printing goes, the main outer shell of the files are from do3d.com. However, I will say this specific file was not really wearable. A lot of editing had to go into it. I wasn't able to fit my leg through the bottom of the thigh piece. Like it was just impossible. So I had to take a heat gun, warp it out. I'm pretty sure I edited about every single one of the files except for like the shoulder piece. As far as mobility goes, I had to slice a good many parts in halves along certain seams just to be able to move. Obviously exhibit A, the ab piece, all of that was like one solid piece. For the back, had to cut the flaps out of the back too to make them move. Obviously I had to edit the arm. So there's a lot of things that I had to go through, one, to edit just to be able to motorize, but that's expected, right? But two, I did have to go through and fix a lot of it just so it was mobile whether that be on the computer or with a heat gun trying to make it bigger. So it did take a good bit of work. I think this was just like the one file that was not wearable. Like for example, this guy, all these parts right here that I have moving and flexible on the bottom were one thing. They were all attached to the shin, which would have been absolutely impossible for me to walk in. So I had to do a good bit of slicing, right? Just to be able to make it mobile. And I'm glad I did. So those files do belong to Do3D, but I had to modify the heck out of them. But everything modified and things like the arm and the back flaps, um, I did model. I modeled the kneecap holder as well. The back brace I modeled myself. For that I used Fusion 360 and for most of the mechanical parts I used SolidWorks. As far as slicing different parts and all those different areas that I had to do to make it mobile, um, I think I used NetFab and a combination of just like 3D Builder if it was a clean cut, but that is what I used. Question three, what printers did you use? This whole suit was printed on two CR10s, but if you're interested in getting started in 3D printing and you're like, man, I can't afford like multiple machines, right? I've printed my first suit on one CR10 and I know someone who printed a whole suit on a single Ender 3. So no excuses. <laughs> Question four, how long did it take you? I started this project at the beginning of quarantine, but then obviously went into my last semester of senior year of college. Um, graduated in December, so time was hard to come by. So taking that into account, it took me about eight months. Question five, how much did it cost? For me, it cost me about 500 bucks. The two most expensive parts of this are plastic, things to print out of, right? PLA, ABS, whatever you choose, and automotive paints, which you use to make it look pretty. I'd say I easily spent about $200 in plastic and $200 in paint. I did obviously already have the printers, epoxy, things like that, but would say I spent $100 in other materials like buckles, Arduinos. So you can do this for a pretty good price. It does take some time though. And finally, question six, why is it blue? Cause I could, okay? I like blue, I like the Mark Seven. Everyone's always like, is it rescue? I'm like, no, I, I just like, I like blue. So those are some of the most common questions I get just to go ahead and knock them out. But if you have any more, put them in the comments below. I do want to do a Q&A on this sort of stuff, whether it be about the suit itself, 3D printing, whatever. I'll be picking some questions here and there and doing a Q&A on those. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry this video took so long to come out. Um, I do really want to like emphasize if you want to see more of the suit and some of the shenanigans I pull in it, uh, on TikTok, I do a lot of that stuff. I'm also on Instagram, but if you're interested, all that stuff should be in the description as well. Be sure to put your questions in the comments because I do want to be able to answer a lot of them. I appreciate you for watching and I'll see you whenever the heck I freaking see you. I think it'll be next week. Hold me accountable, okay? All right, see you.